Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sochil. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of my videos, especially if you're excited for the newest drugstore releases of 2020. Today, I wanted to talk about the newest products that Milani came out with and they came out with a bunch of products and they're still rolling in throughout the rest of the month of January. So let's talk about the products that I picked up from Ulta. First and foremost, they came out with a new foundation, the Screen Queen Foundation. It's supposed to be a natural finish, a luminous foundation, luminous natural finish skin foundation. Interesting to say luminous in the back. So it's to be buildable, light to medium coverage and long wearing. So I ended up picking up actually two different shades. The shade 260 a Warm Bisque, I went into Ulta stores. So they actually have like a display in store stores however i just felt like the shade representation that i would have been which is somewhere between like a light to medium shade range was not in store so they definitely don't have all shades in stores they have a total of 45 shades but not all in stores yet at least in ulta so i picked up 260 but i was like i'm definitely not warm i'm more of a neutral however i wanted to uh compare it and you know just pick up some extra shades especially since i had a gift card so online i picked up the shade 270 new Nude sand, which is described as more of a neutral tone. So I wanted to, you know, kind of compare both of these, see which one, see the difference for you guys on camera. I feel like I'm definitely gonna lean towards the neutral undertone, however. So this is 260. In stores, they had 260 and they skipped all the way to 310. I know I definitely was not golden sand. I felt like I was in between somewhere. So in stores, they didn't have like 270, 280, 290, 300. They're missing a bunch of different shades. So in case you don't find your shade in stores at least try to see it'll give you an idea how to gauge what shade you might be online because it is good to check it out in stores if possible which is great because Ulta actually also had testers which is rare for drugstore foundations originally i was going to pick up the shade 220 which is what i was in their stick foundation and 220 is really a light and when you look at it online it looks darker than it is in person so just keep that in mind so let's see which one of these guys fits for me these are about 13.99 on ulta's website of course on walmart.com or walmart in stores target might be a little bit cheaper so check that out should be coming in there as well i picked up i picked up two eyeshadow shadow palettes one of them i actually found at walgreens and milani has this kind of smaller eyeshadow palette rendition these were about ten dollars this is their most wanted eyeshadow palettes and this one is in the shade burning desire of course i went for these shades but they also have their a larger gilded eyeshadow palette so this is the gilded nude of course i went for this one especially since it kept selling out so obviously everybody's kind of interested in this one they had gilded nudes gilded pastels gilded gold all those different shades so this one is originally about $20 I missed it when it was on sale for like $13.99 so I kind of wanted to check this out and see how these performed because I believe I picked up the like gilded noir or something like that and I was not a fan of that formula this looks a little bit different so let's see I love the um like regular Milani palette the ones that come in this packaging so the most love mattes the pure passion i love this formula so i want to see if the gilded nude formula is also very very similar the next item that i picked up was actually a liquid blush i have a couple different shades i picked up mine in the shade cheeky coral because of course i'm gonna do coral i kind of want to get into more of a liquid blush especially as i do have dry skin kind of get that luminous all over look so i want to check out some more liquid blushes for 2020 then the next product that i picked up was one of their dual highlight palettes they had two different highlighters this is their duo one this is the highlighter duo in the shade 130 spark plug so you have two options i believe one of them is supposed to be more of like a creamy formula yeah cream and powder formula which is great you kind of get two and one a low beam cream formula and a high beam powder formula so let's see how that goes and then they had another highlighter formula which is supposed to be like a baked like made in italy type things and both of them when i was thinking about it i was like this sounds like the formulas that like jacqueline hill was talking about like that creamy formula type of and then like that made in italy baked you know type of formula so i was like if 
Milani can do it for cheaper. Like, do you really need those Jaclyn Hill expensive as hell highlighters? So let's see what Milani's got. And then finally, nothing new, but it was nice. I got a little mini Luminoso blush, which if you have been watching my channel, you know that it's been a while that I've needed to replace it. So I got this itty bitty a little guy to keep me through the new year. So let's get started. Let's see what's up. I'm going to go into my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, and I'm going to use that for my eyeshadow base and we're just gonna go straight into the gilded nude eyeshadow palette i'll probably do another one with the most wanted give me a thumbs up comment down below if you want to see me do a different review and tutorial with the most wanted palette just because i'm most intrigued by the gilded nude palette so i'm gonna do that and then i'm gonna go straight into this gilded nude palette and i'm gonna go into the shade weekend it's like a matte white shade and I'm just gonna set that definitely has a lot of kickback which I don't mind as long as it performs accordingly I feel like I'm curious to see if someone with a more tan a deeper skin tone than mine if they feel like they can really use this palette and get the most out of it especially just because a lot of these little transition shades look kind of like light a little pastel I don't know you let me know um but right off the bat I'm just kind of like mm, I don't know I don't know maybe there's like different options I feel like and Milani I feel like is you know known to be for women of color so I don't know if this is just a different option but let's go in with the shade do not disturb and I'm not trying to do like any intricate intricate looks today I'm really just trying to see how these colors perform for like you know just an everyday basis oh I can see that pigmentation it's like a nice camel shade so right off the bat I see that pigmentation however just thinking of the deepness of the colors and just how women of color friendly these are I feel like to a certain extent to a certain shade range maybe but they do have a bunch of different options for like these gilded palettes as well so it's not just one and uh they're not claiming one size fits so all there's options for everybody hopefully so let's see what's up here so that blended out really nicely i can see it it's buildable yes i like it i think i'll do just an overall swatches of the palette just so you guys can see and just kind of like swatching out of my hand too they are very pigmented but once again the color scheme is just very light this reminds me more of a maybe a spring nude palette Ooh, the shimmery shades are definitely very creamy to the touch like you don't need to swipe over them too much um but they're just kind of they're just kind of light it's great pigmentation I just wish they had maybe a couple of deeper colors. Like I feel like for me, this is no problem, but just thinking of the overall consumer, I don't know if this is something everybody will really enjoy or get to enjoy, if you know what I mean. I'm gonna go into the shade a Little Spoon right here. It's a nice little lilac purple shade. And let's see how pigmented and powerful that is. Ooh, okay. I ain't mad at it. Oh, what did I do purple? I'm gonna do a, okay, whatever. I was like, wait, I'm gonna do um, what you call it? A coral blush, but whatever, we'll make it work. We'll add a little bit of coral here. But yeah, that's pretty pigmented, okay. I'm already liking this better than the other uh, Gilded palette that I did. I'll put that review in down one down below. I think it was like one of the Gilded Noirs or, no, oh, Gilded Rouge, not the Noir, cause I was like, a little bit too deep for me. I think it was the Gilded Rouge. I don't know what was going on with that formula, but already, Right off the bat, I like this way better. So hopefully they made it a little bit different. This is like, yes, Milani. Okay, come through. This is what I expected from you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that didn't take much effort. Very easy to blend. I'm already enjoying this. Okay, I'm gonna blend that out with that first shade. I feel like whew, now there's so many options. I'm gonna go in, hit snooze. I'm gonna mix some burgundy in here. Just to give it some warmth. And I'm just gonna put that in the outer corner. Ooh, that is pigmented. I'm gonna put that right out here. And blend that in. 
Ooh, it's a pretty nice deep red. These do have fallout, so I would definitely suggest doing your eye makeup first and then <laughs> the rest of your face. Blend that out. Gonna go in with my concealer and just carve out the lid and really see how one of these shimmery shades stands out. I kind of really want to do an all matte look with this, but I want to see how a shimmery shade performs. So let's take the shade Keep Scrolling. And I'm gonna put this on to my lid. It's like a nice pink coppery shade. So this is no, ooh, oh, this is no Fix Plus. <laughs> no, you know, spray or anything on its own. And that's uh, pretty nice. Holy shit. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty. Mm. Mm, that's really nice. Okay, let's see with little bit of spray. Ooh, even nicer. You don't need it. You totally don't need a spray, just so you can see. But it's a nice little added extra. Just gonna go back in with hit snooze and just blend that in a little bit. But yeah, these are blending really nicely. Pigmentation is really nice. I like this. All right, and I'm gonna do the other eye and I'll be right back. All right, those eyeshadows are blended really and nicely just wait till I'll add liner and lashes. <laughs> but let's get to the foundation now. Before I add any sort of primer, I just want to kind of color swatch and see which one's gonna be the best shade for me. And just so you guys can kind of see the difference. So let's go in first with Warm Bisque, which was honestly, and it's hard at Ulta stores, I feel like. They had swatcher, like testers, which was great, which is rare for a drugstore foundation but the lighting is so bad so this is 260 warm bisque and now let's see 270 nude sand and it was hard because like this foundation they were like i don't know they were dragging on doing any sort of promo for it and it takes a while for the first couple squeezes by the way um and it wasn't actually on the milani website it was on the uh ulta website first which is interesting so i was trying to find swatches trend mood one if you guys follow her here on instagram didn't have any swatches until a couple days ago after release nobody had swatches so it was hard so let's see this is 270 which is a little bit darker i think 270 just for the neutralness of it so here's 260 and 270. 270 is still natural. What is this? 270 natural stand still looks a little bit yellow. Probably more yellow than 260 warm bisque. I think I kind of want to go in with warm bisque. 270 actually looks like really yellow. Let's see. Let's try to blend them both in. Yeah, two. Let's see, I guess, with my bright lights. I think I'm going to go in. Hmm. 270 just looks a little bit more yellow than 260. So I think I'm actually going to go in with Warm Bisque as I originally kind of planned. And let's see how that kind of looks all around. So let me show you guys side by side. So side by side, Warm Bisque definitely looks more neutral than 270 nude sand. 270 is actually described as a neutral tone, which it looks way more yellow. So I'm gonna go with warm bisque as I originally planned. But I'm definitely curious to see because this is a natural luminous foundation. Can mean many different things. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is use on my right side, I'm gonna use my e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer on this side, and on this side, I'm gonna use my e.l.f. Luminous Putty Primer and see which one I like better. Just because it does say it's supposed to be a luminous natural finish, but I've heard that before. And it's usually like a luminous natural finish for oily skin a lot of these are going to be catered to oily skin like they're gonna i don't want them to play me basically how nars played me with their luminous foundation which is luminous but for oily skin it's just way too dry for dry skin so i have dry skin if you're new here so let's see is this luminous or dry skin i love the milani conceal and perfect two in one foundation that is oh that became like my favorite foundation and surprisingly, like, I don't think it mentions anything about luminosity, dewiness, like, but it just makes my skin glow, which is just very hard to do for dry skin to begin with. So let's see if, you know, 
maybe a primer a different primer will kind of help out we're still using drugstore so let's just see i'm curious but if milani just catered to the dry skin community i am down i am curious let's see what type of luminous natural finish this is so is it saying it's gonna be luminous for oily skin and natural for dry skin but is it gonna be a little bit too matte I don't know. While I let the primer sink in on this side, I'm going to start on my right side. And actually, my right side, I'm going to go in with a Morphe sponge. And on my left side, I'm actually going to go in with a flat top foundation brush from Wet n Well, $3, one of my favorite brushes, just to see which one I like this foundation better with. But we seem nice and plump. So let's go in with Warm Bisque number 260, because yeah, this one is definitely looking a little bit more neutral. So. If you don't find your shade in stores, they have more online. Ooh, that's blending out nice. Ooh, that's actually pretty good coverage. It's supposed to be a light and medium coverage. Hold up. The Conceal and Perfect uh, foundation is definitely a medium to full coverage. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I'm liking the coverage already. This blends really easily. It's almost like a medium coverage right off the bat. Maybe did I put too much? I don't know. Oh, but that feels nice. Okay, that was a, yeah, warm bisque. I think nude sand would have been a little bit too yellow. And this is awkward. I feel like when I'm transitioning from my summer shade to my regular shade. But that's blending out really easily. The coverage is actually really nice. It's like a light medium coverage, not like super light off the bat, which I like personally. But they say it's like buildable too. So we'll see how buildable this is. But yeah, definitely not settling into my skin. Very like dewy or luminous. It's starting to dry down already to like maybe that natural finish. So this is one layer. As you can see how my skin looks. Like it looks nice with one layer, very natural. You can still see some redness peeking through, and this is with a sponge. So I'll probably have to go over certain areas, but I'm definitely gonna do another layer just to see how buildable it is. But that blended out really nicely. It's like not too thick, it's not too watery. I would say the Conceal and Perfect is definitely thicker of a formula. So this is like more watered down, but it's not super like liquidy. And also we'll do some check-ins to see if it like oxidizes or how it wears throughout the day. It's around like 2 p.m. right now. I know I'm getting started late, but I'll probably be up anyway. See how we like the coverage with a brush. Because I feel like I can go either way depending on the foundation for my dry skin. Sometimes if it's not the most hydrating, dewy formula, I much prefer a sponge. But ooh, this is blending out really nice with the brush as well and the brush tends to give you more coverage so there's that this blends out really easily which is what i like but i just wonder how i'm going to like the overall finish on my dry skin at least it is winter time so we'll see how that goes it's definitely not looking too luminous right now on my skin we'll see once we kind of finish it up with all of our sprays but it's definitely looking very natural finish on me, like a natural satin finish, which I mean, I don't mind sometimes, but I just know my skin struggles just to get any sort of luminosity to begin with. So let's do one more layer and see how buildable it is. But I feel like a sponge or a brush, I like them both. So let me just finish up with a sponge just because I feel like I need, I personally need that hydration but either one I feel like will be nice. Very buildable, ooh yeah. That blends out really nicely on top. So I feel like it's like, it's not a total light coverage for it right off the bat. I took a nice light medium to like a nice medium, almost full. Very buildable, very blendable. Still seeing how I like the finish. <laughs> and then I'll see which side, like did the luminous primer help? at all because I'm actually gonna I'm testing that out I feel like in general I'll do a full-on review and demo comparison for the regular poreless putty and the luminous putty primer this type of finish I actually don't mind it doesn't feel like too drying matte it's kind of giving me almost like a L'Oreal 
infallible 24 hour foundation vibes which i love that one so hopefully i like this one that one's definitely just more way more full coverage right off the bat so here's with two layers it does look like a nice medium coverage for me it's definitely looking more natural than luminous we'll see once i kind of spray my face because even with any other foundation i have dry skin so but it seems to cover overall pretty nicely the areas i'm going to look out for is my t-zone to see if it gets really dry or what but I definitely need to spray something already because I don't want it to get like crumbly on me. It's definitely a little bit dry around my forehead. So let me put on concealer, brows, liner, lashes, and let's move on to cheeks. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> I was like, why is it looking really yellow? So I accidentally mixed a little bit of the nude sand with it. Ugh. All right, well, whatever. So had we stuck to the 260 warm bisque, we would have been good. So let's pretend I put on the nude sand. I much prefer 260 warm bisque. No wonder. I was like, why does this look yellow on my hand? Uh, oh, well. So if we would have gone with nude sand, that's too yellow. All right. We got liner, lashes, and some brows. We are looking good. And I'm liking this eyeshadow going on even better. I was like, I don't know what I was doing, but I was like, let's play with some purples. Okay. So I'm going to just finish up the bottom of the eyes and, you know, nothing different. Then I'm just going to take a little bit more of that hit snooze and just go underneath that lash line. And P.S. if you hear any noises in the background, because Frankie's got the fellas over for fool's ball. So we're almost done, though. I mean, it's the same as if, you know. Blaze is doing his regular shenanigans. But I'm really digging this palette, the pigmentation, much better than that Gilded Rouge one. Like this formula, this formula is pretty good. Also did concealer and stuff like that. I went with my Milani Conceal and Perfect Concealer and my bronzer, my Milani bronzer for that nice structured look. And now let's go in to, I have not used a like liquid blush in a while. So I'm curious to see like just how pigmented this is. And honestly, I thought it would probably be a little bit bigger, but maybe I'm going to be careful with it. And just, you know, a little bit goes a long way. So let's shake it up just in case, because I don't know what to expect <laughs> from this liquid blush so let's just do a little bit and just kind of add from there that looks orange <laughs> so i'm just gonna go in with my fingers and I actually have like a little stipple brush too all right so let's just take a little bit and let's see if a little bit goes a long way Oh, okay, I can see it. So it's like not as crazy pigmented as, you know, it would go on on your finger, which is great news. All right, so I was just playing it safe, but that's like just, you know, that small little amount, I can see it, and it's definitely like nice and buildable. So let's try to build it up. Really make sure you blend this out. You can probably even go in with a beauty blender too if you feel like you added too much. But that is nice. So I feel like I went a little bit crazy, but I want to... It looks good, however, it just feels like it's not laying fully on, like, certain parts of my foundation. Like, it's like a little, little bald spot there. <laughs> that I want just right here. So let's see if maybe with the Beauty Blender would help. I'm not too well versed, but yeah, it just feels like right here, it just does not want to stick. Could it just be me? I mean, it's a Milani foundation, so I would hope <laughs> they would work together. I mean, I feel like, I don't know, I guess depending what you use, I feel like a, just a powder blush is just a little bit less work. Ugh, there you go. Just not want to stick there. It's good. It gives you a nice luminous finish. I did have bronzer, so maybe I should have put this on first. Ugh, yeah, I don't know. For me, it's just a little bit too time consuming. It's okay. It's good. Let's see just how it like sits and wears. 
it's like for a spring blush maybe I do like how it doesn't look powdery though it looks very healthy like a healthy glow so it's growing on me I would say maybe just be careful not to add any powder so that's kind of hard if you like set your concealer it looks nice I think that's all I need because we did the most with the eyes but I mean it's tiny but a little bit does go a long way it gives you like a nice healthy glow on the cheeks though for someone who wasn't too into I was like hmm, maybe maybe I feel like especially in the springtime I'm it's growing on me so let's just see how it wears especially since I have dry skin so too much powder can sometimes be too much now let's get into the highlight this is their dual highlights a cream and a powder so let's see which one's the which I don't know which one's which I think I think this one's the creamy side, yeah. This one feels more creamy. So it's a spark plug. It looks definitely like golden, maybe a little rose golden. So let's see. So this is the creamy side. This one just feels creamy. It doesn't feel like a true cream though. Ooh, but that feels nice. So that's like a nice subtle. And then, so that's the low beam and here is the high beam. Oh yeah. But they both look nice like they look nice on the skin it doesn't look glittery the high beam kind of has like a hint of like rose gold at least in this shade oh these look nice they feel nice they feel creamy you can't see chunks of glitter in it Ooh, i'm excited okay so let me see don't know i think with the cream one let me just try to add it i guess just with my fingers oh 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 yes oh yes that's the low beam <laughs> Whew. holy crap let me see if i can use a brush let me see with the brush if it makes a difference since it is creamy i'm curious oh that's low beam though so let's see what high beam is <laughs> holy crap that looks nice that sits on the skin really nicely too oh okay I'm gonna take a clean brush and I'm gonna go straight to that powder one. Yeah, it's definitely the powder, the high beam. It's got like a rose gold to it. Oh. 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 Okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh. The shade might be a little bit dark for my skin tone, I feel like. Uh, if you're tan, this is going to look great. Ooh, but this just makes me want to check. Holy crap, look at that. Just want to check out maybe one of their other shades just to see if that might be a little bit better. But like in the summertime, this would have been perfect for me. Oh, so let's see. Actually, I kind of want to lay it on top. That's low beam shit. Oh my God. Yeah. Ooh, that's like high def resolution, like wet. Like that looks so wet on my cheeks. That looks so good. I would probably maybe just need a different color. Hmm. And let me see if it laid on top. That's like a minimal product. Holy crap. Oh, okay. Okay, Milani. Y'all did that. Okay, okay. So what I'm probably just gonna do is just blend that out with a little sponge, but it just, the formula is really nice. I think for both of these, depending how subtle you wanna go or how extreme, which they're both pretty extreme, which I'm not mad at, a little bit goes a long way too. Like my cheek, look, it gives it that really nice wet effect. So I kinda wanna get some more of these and find just like the right color scheme for me, but this one's a good one. I think especially if you have like a nice tanner skin tone, a little bit darker than me. Oh yes. Oh, yes holy cow yeah that was a little bit that's that's it that's it that's all you need mm -hmm. that's it i'm done i'm done mm-hmm mm god oh yeah jacqueline hill highlights who this like w the way they were describing it reminds me so much of like the jacqueline hill and like it was like made in italy type things i was just like yeah but this is cheaper so <laughs> hello milani what i think i'm gonna do is take a little bit of that I think the high beam one and I'm actually just gonna put it right there yes holy cow yes pick up these highlights holy cow they are nice so creamy 
so beautiful all right so this is what we look like with everything all the new products on our face i haven't sprayed my face yet just so you can guys kind of see get a final like little mini update on the foundation it's settling in pretty nicely which is good for my dry skin so it's not looking like too dry and normally i don't judge a foundation too much when like just um i haven't done any spray normally i won't like judge it too harsh until i do add my like setting hydrating sprays just because that's what i need personally so now i'm gonna go in with my regular routine my max fix plus i feel like dry skin you definitely just need some more help from some other products um any other skin type i think you would have been fine so i'm gonna go with my max fix plus and then if you want to just skip that max six plus you can go in with my regular milani make it last setting spray which is a must no matter what foundation you wear i think it's definitely just going to extend that wear time in general now with the spray i'm liking it even better it's like growing on me it looks really nice like i said it kind of reminds me kind of of the l'oreal infallible 24 hour foundation not as full coverage so for those of you who didn't like that also not as matte it's definitely leans more on that natural finish and i feel like now with that spray and as i let it wear it's gonna give me more of that hint of luminosity i also tried that foundation in the winter time really liked it so this gives your skin like a nice almost like porcelain type of finish i like the coverage and i'm just going to check into the areas if anything my forehead to see how that's going but around here which is rare that i actually like how a foundation looks there mm, around here it looks really nice so let's you know see it's almost 3 p.m now after we've had this on it's taken me a while to put everything together so since two after an hour or so i am liking how that's kind of settling in there so i'm gonna do a couple more check-ins throughout the day try to stay up as late as possible and see how we like this new milani makeup that came out so see you guys in a couple of hours probably have like another t-shirt in my hair like more combed hey guys so it is now about 6 30 so four and a half hours since i put this foundation and some of the products on my face so i kind of want to do a check-in midday evening here <laughs> 6 30 p.m because i'm like okay then we can have it on for maybe another four hours Ooh, 10 p.m man that's late but wanted to show you guys what i'm seeing here and for the foundation I'm definitely not really getting the luminous effects from it like someone with normal or oily skin might get. It's definitely kind of dry on my face and yeah, definitely starting to get a little bit dry. Like I like how it's sitting, like the way that it's sitting on my face, like it gives you like that nice little like poreless like porcelain type of effect, but because my skin is so dry now in the winter time too, it's just not sitting as I would like it to sit, like as well as maybe, like I mentioned, that L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear. Like, it looks nice, but I can see some dryness around my face. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, definitely my forehead. I saw it from the beginning. It was definitely dry. Um, I would say, yeah. The bottom right here looks pretty good. This area doesn't really get too dry around my face, so that actually looks really nice same thing over here but we're getting a little bit dry around like the mouth area i feel like for photos it looks nice but once you get kind of up close and personal uh for the two poreless putty so i did the elf poreless putty regular on this side and the luminous poreless putty a couple things that i do notice is that around here it's maybe starting to get a little bit dry around my nose but it's still looking a little bit better around this side Ooh, got a little bit of my lipstick on there I think I might, I kind of prefer the luminous putty side uh, in general. Just by a smidge, I think the luminosity from that primer is definitely helping on this side. This side's starting to get just a little bit drier, a little bit quicker. So a tip for me to you, if you have dry skin especially, or if you have normal skin, you want to get more of that luminosity, definitely try to go for maybe a luminous base as well. So if I had to say, yeah, I definitely favor my left side just a little bit more. The highlights... As you can see is still going strong so this is that high beam and this is that low beam but there's still a beaming and i had to like adjust my like camera every once in a while because it was just like too much uh so yeah the highlights going strong the blush i can still kind of see it but as i mentioned it was just kind of like some areas just wasn't sticking 
However, I can see it kind of getting a little bit dry too. So it could be the foundation, but I can still see the power of, of the blush. Eyeshadows are still going super strong. Like that formula is awesome. Ooh, yeah, I freaking love it. It was $20, but I know it was on sale also for like $13.99 or something like that on the Ultra website. So highlights are looking good. But yeah, I don't know. So I think like I already kind of had an idea when I was adding this. I'm not disliking. I think I... This is a foundation that's gonna be way better for me in the spring and summertime. Like there's aspects of it where I see it's like just not right now for my dry skin, but for normal to oily skin, I think this will look really nice on your skin. Like almost kind of where I see it could be for my skin, but because it's so dry, it's not quite there where it gives you like that nice like poreless porcelain effect, but my skin just isn't doing that, but it's still, it looks nice, but I can just see the dryness peeking through better than the Milani their stick foundation. That one was definitely not for dry skin. That was so bad on my skin. But this one, like I want to love it. Like I just want to hydrate the hell out of my skin and it'll look so beautiful. So I see where they're going with this. So dry skin, I don't know. It just depends how you're going to prep your skin. So this is the four and a half hour mark. So if you guys want me to check in in another like four hours, three and a half hours or so, We'll do that in a bit, but so far, that eyeshadow is holding up pretty well. All right, guys, it is almost 10 p.m., almost pretty much there, a couple extra minutes. <laughs> but basically, I've been wearing this makeup for eight hours today, and I made it. I'm such an old lady. I'm ready to go to sleep. But I wanted to do my final check-in, show you guys how it's looking after eight hours, and let's just talk about each product individually. So first, the Milani Gilded Nude Eyeshadow Palette. Oh my god, like that is so good. Still looking amazing after eight hours. I think it's really a great. I feel like hopefully the formula is similar for every palette that they have. So this is the Gilded Nude. They have a Gilded Pastel. They have a couple of other renditions of the Gilded palettes. And this formula of those palettes that have come out for sure for the Gilded Nude, I love. I think, of course, with any like eyeshadow palettes, type of additions when they have several um, different shades, different color schemes. It's just gonna go come down to what color scheme do you want. This one, my only thing with it is, I'm just curious if anybody with tan or deep skin tones is really gonna get the most use out of it. I feel like maybe if you had maybe just that, you know, side, maybe, but still I feel like they could be a little bit deeper. So I'm wondering if like all women of color will really like this. Let me know if you pick it up and if you have like, you know, a deeper skin tone than I do. And if you feel like, yes, you can work with it. Or if like, mm, no, not really. Maybe you're going to go with another color scheme. But if anybody picks this one up, I think you will really like it. Um, I think the colors are great. They blend beautifully. The pigmentation is really great. So yes, I would definitely recommend this palette. That's my only thing with it. But maybe one of the other color schemes maybe speaks to you more anyway. As for the uh, blush, so I think this is really going to just come down to whether you're someone who wants to experiment and use a liquid blush. I personally don't use them as often, but I feel like I can still kind of see the color. I like how it gives me more of a luminous type of effect, glow to my cheeks with the color. And as bright as it looks in like the packaging and even when it comes out, it's not that bright. Of course, you can make it as bright as you want, but I kind of do enjoy the luminous effect. So it just comes down to how often will I use it. I will say I feel like liquid blushes maybe are a little bit more time consuming, maybe a little bit messier if you're not as used to it. Maybe I can try it with a brush next time. So I think if you're someone who's into liquid blushes, I think you'd really like this one. If you maybe don't have that much experience or if maybe, you know, you don't want to use a brush, you want to use your fingers, but that's too messy for you, then maybe skip it. But I feel like if you want to try it, I think you, I think you will like it. Uh, the only thing, I don't know if that was just like my little like patch area that it wouldn't add but then again I could have had like um, a little bit of my under eye setting powder there so definitely be careful and try not to have any sort of powders on your face prior to adding this but I can still see it 
still looks pretty nice. Wore pretty well after eight hours. The highlighter duo. Yes. Oh my God. Get this. I love both formulas. And even though one of this says low beam, the other one says high beam, they're still both pretty intense and look really, really great. So this one is the shade spark plug. I kind of want to try out another one just to see if I'm going to like it a little bit better. But regardless, I think this works for my skin tone. And I feel like even like tan and deep skin tones, oof, it's going to look gorgeous. But they have a couple of other different colors to, you know, kind of choose from. But I like this one. Let me know if you guys want me to try out the other just single like baked highlighters that they have as well. I'm kind of curious. Plus, there's a bunch of other items that are still yet to release that I need to get my hands on and try out. So maybe round two. But if you guys were curious about this dual highlight, which I love because it's like you get two highlights in one because especially if you're a makeup addict like me, like how often do you go through like one huge highlight, you know, I still have the Milani this size like highlighter and just a little bit goes a long way. So I have so much of that. But if you want to try like two different colors, two different types of formulas, yes, get the highlight. For the foundation, the Screen Queen foundation, honestly, from just the name, I really wasn't sure what to expect from it, but it's a luminous and natural skin finish. I felt it was very buildable. I love the way that it blended out. I love the coverage. I think it's great for anyone who wants like a nice light to medium coverage. I have dry skin, so I don't see the luminosity, especially right now with the weather, with the winter weather, I don't see the luminosity as much as someone with normal to oily skin would. I honestly just really see more of a natural finish. And for dry skin, you know, even with my lash check-in, it's not perfect, but I don't want to completely write it off. I feel like if you're dry skin, I think this foundation is best suited, it's gonna be better suited in the spring and summertime. I can see myself really liking this foundation in the spring and the summertime, because looking at my skin right now, it's not bad, but I can see, I can see the dryness. However, it's not as dry as like some really like, drying foundations are so it's like uh, like on the edge so it's not completely perfect so i know that this in the winter time for me for dry skin is just not right but because of that i can see myself really liking this in the spring and especially even summertime because the milani conceal and perfect two-in-one foundation i feel like i love 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 that foundation however it's not my absolute favorite to wear in the summertime because of the thickness of it and because it's so heavy so i feel like for me what's missing for this formula for my skin is definitely that moisture that hydration and that if you've been watching my channel or if you have dry skin you you know it's hard to accomplish in the winter time if you live in Chicago or somewhere cold <laughs> like me so therefore I'm just like you know what you're gonna stick around and I think I think you're just gonna go even better when I try it again in the spring and summertime so I would say normal to oily skin definitely check it out I think I, I like this formula like I like it I'm upset at how much it's just not working just quite yet how I would like it to work but it's not bad like I've had other foundations dry on me like really bad. Like it's good. It's it's okay. You know, for my dry skin right now, it's just okay. But I'm drying my forehead. Um, just kind of starting to disappear just a little bit, but like barely. Like my nose isn't like completely dry where I've seen. Um, and it's just kind of like just kind of sitting on top a little bit. I definitely, though, I really liked it a lot more with the e.l.f. Luminous putty primer as opposed to the regular putty primer i think it's okay but i feel like if you did want to try it do a luminous primer especially in the winter time and it just sits on the skin a little bit better i can still like it's it's helping it um as opposed to you know just minorly not as you know just a little bit less liking it with just the regular poreless putty but i don't know i'm not disliking it i just know that not every foundation is meant depending on your skin type for certain seasons, you know, you might need to switch it up. So dry skin, let's try this out in the spring and summer. But oily skin, normal skin, let me know if you guys like it. I'm really curious. I feel like normal skin, you might really like this. Uh, however, let me know compared if you've tried the Conceal and Perfect Foundation, let me know which one you like better. Normal skin, you're so lucky. You can go either way depending how you're feeling, but dry skin, dry skin if maybe you know this is, you know, not what you should use right now and you agree, 
Then make sure you check out the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation that you are going to love. If you have not heard me rave about it every single time here on my channel, you need to get on it because that's, that's what's up. But maybe we're going to bring this bad boy out in the summertime. And for me, yeah, Warm Bisque was definitely a better color. Weirdly enough, that one just worked better. It looked a little bit more neutral than the Nude Sand. So that was my review and demo of the newest Milani products that just came out. There's more. There is a more. Apparently they came out with like a whole skincare line. And then they also, they had like a rose water spray. I kind of want to try that. But then they're also coming out with some new lip liners as well as some eyebrow pencils. Oh my God, I'm excited. So maybe I'll have to try it out with the Milani Most Wanted palette since you guys haven't seen that one yet. This one is in Burning Desire. These are only $10 in case you don't want to spend 20. These type of palettes are definitely really great for those of you who feel overwhelmed by a lot of different shades. Even I love makeup and sometimes I can too, just a, li just a little bit. But you know, if you are, maybe these palettes might be better suited for you. So I want to check this one out next. Comment down below, give me a thumbs up if you want to see a round two two of the rest of the newest Milani products coming out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.